Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Dinosaur Dungeon. Hopefully, uh, my microphone is loud and clear today. I don't have my normal microphone, so the only one that is working is the one that's on my webcam. So today, we are going to do the third part in the series of the building and painting dinosaur models using our masterpiece models, Parasaurolophus. We're actually going to use um, another uh, model as well to kind of go over the same thing again, which is this piece of uh, CM Studio. Uh, Sukumimus. So we're going to do that as well. So the, the first thing I want to say is sorry for taking so long to get this uh, third part out to you guys. I've been uh, super busy over the last uh, year doing uh, a lot of different things and I've kind of let my YouTube channel just kind of fall apart a little bit. I haven't been on there as much and just been a little sporadic with uh, uploading videos to the channel so sorry about that anyway I'm gonna try and uh, get some more stuff done on there try to be uh, a little bit more regular and try to get the subscriber base up um, get it going a little bit more so with that said the two things I basically want to cover in this video um, is um, the glass eyes install the glass eyes into this guy um, and uh, the other thing is now that he's primed I just want to talk about um, kind of checking him over and possibly repriming him because um, in the last video we filled some seams you can kind of see that here some of the brown sticking through it's kind of been scratched up partially because it's been sitting around for a while this will definitely be reprimed just from that alone but you can also see on the head here let me see if I can get, get that zoomed into here sometimes if you my voice changes it's because I'm looking at my computer monitor which is actually behind me uh, instead of in front of me so but you can see this white line here so after I prime this dinosaur I noticed that some of the seam line was still uh, visible and I didn't like that so <laughs> I had to do something about that, so I went in and uh, scraped it down a little more and uh, tried to fix it up. Um, another spot, I'm going to see if I can show you guys. Um, it's kind of hard. You can see some other spots, maybe right in here. In the legs, there's some spots, and along the bottom of the body, I'm not you kind of get the gist of it but there's some seam lines that weren't showing up very well because this guy was cast in white resin which is very hard to see the detail in that's why personally I kind of prefer when it's cast into resin like this it makes it easier for cleanup uh, right off the hop <clears throat> so but anyway that's why it's okay to prime things twice the first go to primer is usually just after you've filled in all the seams to kind of get an idea of how well you've done and to um, see any spots that you might have missed or things you want to clean up because the worst is when you're actually painting and then you're you know and then you see some terrible seam and you're like oh and then you gotta like clean it up and start your paint job over again so it's good to just give it a light coat of a nice gray like this a good color to see and then kind of spin your model around take a look my lights kind of in the way to to do it all perfectly but you can get the idea um, to see what I'm talking about and that's basically all I wanted to cover with this so he is primed he's going to be primed again uh, not in this video I'm not going to prime him in this video uh, everybody knows basically how to prime um, a dinosaur I may shoot a coat of primer on in the beginning of the next video we'll see just because of the uh, uh, just to show you the Steinorez primer now 
<laughs> this guy was primed in a video that is already on YouTube. So if you go to the Stino Res Primer Review, you can see this guy being primed and my review of that awesome primer. So go check that out. I believe I actually did try to film a third part of this back then and unfortunately my old computer kind of did lose it, but that's okay because I didn't get to do the glass eye part at that time. So this is turning out to be um, the proper part three anyway so that's good and I could be more thorough this time and kind of show you guys exactly what I wanted to show you because I think the main part is going to be the glass eyes you guys kind of get the gist of the rest of it you know you prime it once you go over it you can see some seam lines you want to go in take your um, I'm, I'm like the uh, Dremel tool for that you know you come back in and these Dremel tools like this one here, I'm going to see if it'll zoom in and show you. No, it probably won't. Oh, there you go. has a nice edge on it. You can get really tiny ones and you can come in and literally carve the skin detail. So that's good. Um, I know that uh, there's a video on Stan Winston where he literally like kind of grooves in the two pieces so it's kind of like this groove in between like that and then fills them with Bondo and then smooths them out which is kind of cool that doesn't work so well for detail because then you're kind of like actually losing a whole bunch of detail to do that but you could do it that way if you want to take a, a texture stamp off of the piece and that's actually one thing that I didn't even think about that I will quickly talk about right now actually that I will add to this video and I can do that right off just thinking about it right now so in my drawer below me here but you cannot see I have a whole um, plastic Tupperware container of Super Sculpey and I might have covered this in a video before if I didn't it doesn't matter or if I did we'll cover it again because this is so useful so it's good to reiterate it you can see up here some really nice skin detail so we've got our Super Sculpey that's uh that was terrible because this model's very light so it moves around a lot so we'll take it easy when we do it. Push it in there. Get a good bunch of it. Sorry that my hand's in the way. You can see where it is now. You can see the skin detail right there. Nicely. Hopefully it's showing up. Again, bad color for showing up on camera. But we've got... A perfect match so if we were gonna grind this out here for instance and make some folds and then we wanted the detail once we bake this then we come back in press it into the soft clay and then it's done so that's how that's done All right, so next up is the glass size. So on this side, you can see that I've already pre-drilled this hole with my drill here. I've uh, measured the size of the eye to make sure I have the right drill bit. And then on this side, I have left it alone to show you the whole process. So I think what we'll do is we'll leave it this way first and we'll get this eye to the same spot as the other eye. So because this is rounded, when you try to stick a drill onto it, what happens is it usually slides all over the place and then you end up drilling down here and that is horrible. <laughs> it has happened to me. So, what I do is I 
come in with my exacto into the center of the eye and I try to groove out the center of the eye. Now that's probably good enough there. So now you can see the eye is flat. Oop, bumped the camera, sorry. You can see that the eye is flat now, so it should be easy to put the drill in. I'll move it off to the side a little bit, I'll put it actually this way. So it's, you can see, so I can get it right. Working nicely. Okay, so I think that's probably good enough. The other side, I actually drilled it too deep, so it doesn't look very good. So we need a piece of clay. Where I'll actually use that clay that we used before. We'll take a glass eye, and I'm gonna. We'll talk about the glass eyes in just a second, but I'm gonna hold one. There we go. And that is way too deep as well, but that's okay because I'm going to show you something as well from that side. Okay, so let's talk about glass eyes for a minute. Okay, so what I use is these. So I'll pick it up from the back so you can see. So I use these taxidermy eyes. And the, I use the flint ones now. I, I do buy colors sometimes, so they didn't have the green gold color that I like in that size. So I had to paint it myself. So I buy these flint eyes. But you can get eyes in any color. Um, there's a lot of places that you can get them. Uh, online, uh, the taxidermy supply shops uh, have them. Um, there's a popular one in the United States online, and I can't remember the name. Um, I'll try to I'll look it up and put it in the description, so that way you can click on it. And uh, they have fantastic glass eyes, though, so definitely check them out. So, <clears throat> what we're gonna do now? We're going to install these glass eyes. So we're going to mix up some of this stuff. This is plumber's epoxy. Just a little bit. Just cut a thin little strip. And we want to mix it really well. And we're just going to put a little bit in there. No, it's not mixed enough. Make sure you wet your hands when you're putting it in because it'll stick to your hands more than it will stick into the stuff. Alright, take a little piece. There may be too much. No, I like that. Okay, see that's in there. I'm going to rip another little well, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. We're going to take our Sculpey again. We're going to grab that eye. And then we're just going to place it right in the center. There we 
go. And it push a little bit. Now you can see that it's pushed some stuff out. That's okay because we're just going to scrape that off because we're going to build some stuff over top. So we don't want it to do that. I'm going to flatten it. Actually, that's the wrong tool. Use this and wet it just to smooth it out on this side. Now, because we're using five minute epoxy instead of like Abe's epoxy sculpt, for instance, we got to go fast. You can see how much better that looks already. I think it looks great. So, let's do the same on this side, which was drilled way too deep. Flip it over. Skull beam. Hold it. Push it in a bit. Oh, no. Okay, so what we did here was we made a mistake. mistakes happen and just gotta try to fix them as quickly as possible. So what happened there was the eye on the other side had more clay in it so it was sticking out farther. So this one needs a little bit more because there's a lot more of the hole drilled in. So the eyeball sticking out farther. better. That actually looks perfect. Yep, yeah, looks good. Okay. So I'm going to use this stuff because I want to clean off the eye and then we'll zoom it in and show you and then we'll just make the This stuff's lacquer thinner, which will take off the paint and everything, but I like to use it because it cleans off all the junk. I'll probably paint some clear gloss on these eyes because they do get a little yucky along the way. Yeah, see they're getting dirty. We don't want that. So we're just going to wipe them off, clean them up, zoom them in. All right, so there you go. So there's how to put the glass eyes in. And if there's still time, which usually I would do it one at a time. You can take your clay that you mixed, your 5 minute epoxy, which we might have time to roll one eyelid, and take it like this, bring it in. This is where it's hard because it does, like I said before, stick to your hands. You get it in there like that, get it pushed down. So it looks nice. Get that smooth right in there. Like that. Bring it to about the halfway point. Cut it down. Take the same out here. And we'll continue to smooth it down. All right, so there's that. Now this stuff's getting a little too hard to use. So we're just gonna finish this up. I don't even think we're gonna need to do this one because we're pretty much gonna cover it all with that. 
I was thinking it might be hard because of the size to show you exactly how to do that. So we're just going to finish it up with that one. We're going to cut another little slice. Should be enough to finish it all off. And then I think we're going to end the video here. So let's just <coughs> roll these out. And then we'll talk about how to protect the glass eye while you're painting it, and that'll be it. Just got to roll this up, make sure again that it's rolled really well. All right. Take a minute. All right. Rip a little bit off. Roll it on the table. This video is actually taking quite a while. That's okay. It's good to cover everything we need to. I'm going to try and finish this dinosaur in six videos. I'm hoping, anyway. And then I might actually switch to this dinosaur for um, doing a diorama because I've got such a cool idea for a diorama. We'll see how it goes though. Just hoping. Okay, so we'll pick it up with our knife. Probably not the best thing to do. And this is what happens when you try to do things with your hands because this stuff loves to stick to your hands. So we'll have to come in and redo some of it. But that's okay. Just want to give you guys a basic idea of what we're trying to do here. That looks good actually. You can get some of the wrinkles in there. I'll try and put some wrinkles on the top. Try and blend it in so you can see what it looks like on that eye. And then we're going to try and quickly do the same thing on the other eye. Again, being 5 minute epoxy, likes to dry on us pretty quick. We're trying to get our get our hands a little wet this time, so we don't run into the same problem. Bring it up to here. Cut it off. get it to hold it right there and maybe right there there we go remove that piece we'll bring this these uh, rubber these silicone tools are really handy they're great for sculpting they work good for this too Cut that off right there. I'm going to use this end to kind of flatten it a little bit to the end. There we go. And then just do a bottom one quickly before it dries. <laughs> That should be it. All right, my hands wet again. There we 
we go. Oh, that one's working a lot better. That's awesome. There we go. Sorry if it's out of the view of the camera. Just got to kind of pull it in towards you a little bit. There we go. I'm going to cut this piece off right here. All right. If we can't pull the thing without. Oops, sorry. Beautiful. All right. And there it is a nice close up of a glass eye installed. So remember. If you want to make your model look better, add some glass eyes. Just measure the size of the eye in your model. Usually go one millimeter bigger. And then you can use this stuff. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this stuff right away. Use the Aves Epoxy Sculpt. It gives you a lot more working time. And make sure to put water on your hands when you're using the epoxy clays because they like to stick to your hands more than the model. So remember that, it's a great tip. So <clears throat> go out and give it a try. Um, uh, like I said, I'll put a link in the description to some places where you can get glass eyes. I'll put a link to where I get them here in Canada. Um, there's a place right here in Kitchener, Ontario called Chipping Away where I actually go and buy them. It's kind of handy because it's only a 30 minute drive for me so that's really good so anyway in the next video I will probably just give this a reprime um, and then we'll cover the eyes with um, a liquid mask from Vallejo but I'll show you that in the next video and then we'll uh, probably start base coating this guy and getting him painted up oh and we'll do the inside of the mouth that will be the first thing that we get done in the next video. So anyway, just to recap, measure your glass eye, find the appropriate size drill bit, drill out the hole, mix your epoxy clay, push a little bit of it in the hole, get your glass eye pushed in, use clay to hold the glass eye because if you drop it on the floor, especially with ones that are the size for this other one for instance you've probably lost it as soon as it falls on the floor and then roll out some epoxy clay to mix your eyelids and that's about it and as far as the other um, first part of the video goes give it a light coat of a nice dark gray or a nice almond color primer which works great when you're going to do browns um, and then go over it, look for any seams that you might have missed, clean them up, and then give it another shot of primer. So, thank you everybody for watching. Sorry about the delay in making this video. And look for the next video in not the too distant future. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and have a great day.